What the Gaber Streamcast guy here, and this is my honest review for Chorus. It feels like video games these days are always trying to blend together genres. If you're playing a first person shooter, it typically has RPG mechanics where guns level up. If you're playing something like a driving game, it's also going to have a crafting system inside it. Every developer loves to try and combine different styles of gameplay into a singular product, but Chorus, it may be a very first. This is an open world style flight game in deep space but it combines a lot of different stuff like side quests, unlockables, hidden objectives, and a pretty decent plot. But on top of that is some very, very solid flight mechanics. Flying around, doing space combat, all of this is just surprisingly tight for how confusing of a package this is on the surface. Now, Chorus is a game that has some pretty heavy themes inside it, and not all of them fully work. Now, let's begin with what the plot is. We're playing as this mysterious pilot named Nara, who used to be part of this huge war that was going on long, long ago. Essentially, there's this mega church that's not just trying to rule the galaxy, but they're essentially doing their own gigantic crusade. This church is going around purging anybody who will not convert to their religion. And more than that, they consider it this gigantic song, which is why they call it the chorus. It's either you sing with us, or you die screaming. Now here's the part of the story that makes the plot a bit more juicy, which is that Nara originally was part of the chorus. She was somebody that was one of the main expungers. She literally destroyed planets on behalf of this giant evil church. And now she realizes the error of her ways, she's decided to quit and join the resistance. During the course of this game, you get a chance to go from different solar systems, trying to explore and help out this very struggling resistance force. But what I like about it is that the resistance fighters are very much outmatched. This is a serious underdog story where we have less technology, less hope, and a heck of a lot less people against the overwhelming force of the chorus. The only way we can properly fight back is through some very careful flight mechanics and also by doing a lot of side quests. So during the course of this game, as you go to each of the six main planets, you start doing things like trying to help people just survive. Now these missions can be things like trying to escort a series of refugees to a warp gate so they can escape the solar system, or sometimes just trying to fight off a big battalion of the chorus that have happened to show up. But during the course of this, what managed to keep me so entertained to the entire game is that pretty much every single area you go to keeps introducing additional new enemies. This is a gigantic pet peeve of mine, but I feel like so many games now have like five to nine nine different styles of enemy. You just end up fighting the same monsters again and again and again. Chorus literally introduces like 30 different styles of pilots you're going against who get different abilities, different tactics, different levels of shield, and while they are still just different styles of plane that you're fighting against, they do in fact behave differently in combat. I deeply enjoyed that the further I got into this game itself, the more it managed to change and evolve how I had to play it. But this does bring me to the biggest surprise of the game itself, which is the fact that this has branching story paths. I mean, I'm still just completely stunned, but basically what happens is that during the course of doing these missions, whether they be main quests or side quests, you occasionally get to do these options where it basically says like, all right, there's pirates in the sector, go and attack them. So you go there and fight off a bunch of like little miscreants. And at the end of the quest, sometimes it'll give you an additional option like finish them off or leave a couple pirates alive and in some circumstances this does completely change the nature of later quests people will become your friends it'll change dialogue i've had certain times where boss fights were really really easy because of friends i made along the way like i had what were bad guys earlier in the game helping me together to fight against the chorus because of a matter of pure survival it's interesting to me that they're managing 
continues to be this warping and changing aspect of it. But this also brings me to the gear system. The major reason you're going to be doing so many side quests, if you choose to do them, is because of the crazy gear unlocks. You can put on better shield plating, better thrusters, the way you can drift around asteroids more easily, or you can just get more powerful weaponry, which personally was my favorite thing. And as you do this, there's multiple levels of this, so you can get like Gatling Gun rank 1, 2, or 3, upgraded missile packs, or different styles of laser beams to knock out enemy shields. And it's cool the fact that as you progress, you definitely get stronger, and it feels pretty necessary. Some of the later quests are actually under a time limit, so it really helps to be able to do that extra damage per second. Doing side quests really makes this game a smoother experience, and if you've done a bunch of them, then of course, like I said earlier, it can even unlock a lot more dialogue options. But the final thing I want to talk about is the final good and the final bad, which really centers on Nara herself. You see, being a part of the chorus, some of the soldiers get these special abilities, which are practically magic. I mean, I guess they are magic, but it lets you do things like your ship can drift, it can swirl around backwards in the middle of a boost. There's also things like a short-range teleport that lets you just literally blink behind your enemies and blast them in the back, or even go through certain barriers and stuff to blow up bigger capital ships. Each of these abilities are unlocked in major story elements, which teach us more about the ability, how to use it, the style of magic, and of course, about Nara herself. I think these skills are cool. It's nice that there's like mysterious space magic attached to the evil religion. I like that a lot, but it does bring me to the one major downside I have to this game, which is the fact that the entire gameplay revolves around your ship. Every quest, all the dialogue, all of everything is done inside of this vessel. Occasionally, we get these short cutscenes where Nara gets out of the ship and just talks to like ghosts and stuff, and that's neat, but the problem is that we very rarely get a chance to see Nara's face. And here's why that's a problem. There is a ton of voice acting in this game, and I think that the writing, while it is cheesy at times, is surprisingly good. Like, everybody manages to vocally convey the seriousness of the threat threat of chorus, and it's a very believable style of like, we have to fight or we have to die fighting. I appreciate that a lot, but because we don't get a chance to see Nara's face, she has a lot of dialogue in this game that's whispered, or at least very vague. Sometimes she talks or alludes to certain concepts, and the fact that there's absolutely no facial animation, I feel like there is some subtle context that is lost. I wish that they put like a tiny picture of her in the corner of the screen so we could see her reacting to some of the major reveals. Like, think about it. She used to be the biggest soldier in this crazy holy war, and now she's battling against Super Space Pope. I want to see her grimace. I want to see her grin with delight. When she saves civilians, I want to see the delight on her face. And yet, instead, she's just a voice in our ear. Now, the audio in this game is fantastic. I appreciate the subtle tones they've managed to weave into this, and also things like the explosions, the impacts, the times when you're boosting through the inside of a ship as it self-destructs. There's so much in here that's done great that it feels like a bit of a failing that we're not getting more out of Nara herself when it comes to just the animations that are intact. The other major downside to this game is that, unfortunately, there are some very unpleasant difficulty spikes, but only revolving around a particular enemy. Now, the cores, for the most part, they're very, very fair fighters. They use standard bullets or space missiles. Like, straight up, as long as you're fighting smart, you can win pretty easily with some practice. But there's this separate group of bad guys that I don't want to talk too much about because it's a spoiler, but they're called the Faceless. And they have these laser beams that pretty much instantly kill you. For whatever reason, these instantly take away your shields, which means that a lot of times, while you're trying to fight them, you have to constantly roll dodge, use your repair kits, you have to stay ahead of them at all times, and sometimes a singular mistake means a game over. Now this feels overly punishing, even if you are properly leveled up for the content. Sometimes, if I knew I was about to start a faceless mission, I would have to fully equip only shield buffers 
to try and survive even against these people for 30 seconds toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which to me kind of ruins the fun of some of the more vibrant missions. But overall, I really did enjoy Chorus, and I'm kind of surprised by that because from the trailers and stuff, this looked like a kind of dry space flight simulator, and in fact, it's really, really, really unique. Props to the developers. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Chorus an 8 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching this video, gamers. If you enjoyed it, please give it a gigantic thumbs up. Hopefully this video can hit like 2,000 likes. I don't know, that seems possible. If you enjoyed the video also, please subscribe if you haven't already. And also, do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.